uh, preach from here if that's okay. I'm somewhat uh, intimidated by, by pulpits. I think it's my Baptist uh, uh, upbringing. Father Timothy can, can uh, understand that, identify with that. So brothers and sisters, this is the time of year when we probably receive a lot of invitations to dinner, parties, and banquets, and holiday parties, and those kinds of things. And some of these invitations, I'm sure, are welcome. Others, maybe not so welcome. There may be other times when we are probably looking for a good excuse to not have to go to something. But there is one invitation that we do not want to decline, and it's the subject of the parable that we heard today in the Gospel reading. So to set the scene a little bit, so Jesus is, at, is invited to this dinner at the home of one of the leaders of the Pharisees. And there were a number of prominent religious leaders there. And Jesus watches as these proud men picked out their places of honor for themselves at the table. Because they all, of course, wanted the, the places of honor. And so he says to them, when he noted how they chose the best places, he said, when you are invited by anyone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in the best place, lest one more honorable than you be invited. But when you are invited, go and sit down in the lowest place. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Now that probably created a little bit of an awkward moment, I would say, at that dinner. Probably that some of those prominent men were somewhat offended by that. But Jesus never shied away from speaking truth to power. And then he gets even more direct, and he turns to the host of the, of the banquet. And he says, you know, when you give a dinner or a supper, don't just ask your friends, your brothers, your relatives, your rich neighbors, lest they also invite you back and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind. And you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you shall be repaid in the resurrection of the just. Now I think there's a lesson in that for, the, for us. You know, who, whom do we invite to our table? Is it just our friends, our relatives, our rich neighbors, you know, people who can repay us? Or do we also invite the poor, those who can never respond? I think it's something that we do need to think about. So again, that was probably a bit of another awkward moment at the dinner. And finally, one of the guests breaks the tension by asking a religious, asking something religious. And he says, blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And then Jesus heard that, and then he, said, then he goes into this parable. And he talks about the man uh, who gives this, uh, a wedding feast, and he invites many people, and a number of them make excuses for why they can't come. And so then he tells his servants, okay, go out then and extend the invitation to the poor and the maimed and the blind and the lame. Now, the, the, this is a parable of the kingdom of God, specifically of the marriage feast of the Lamb in the age to come. Of course, the invitation that Jesus, the parable has a, has a deeper meaning. He's talking about the invitation that God gave to Israel, because all of these were religious leaders of Israel. And as we know, Israel, they were God's chosen people under the Old Covenant, so the invitation went out to them first. But many of them rejected the invitation. They did not respond when God sent the Messiah. And so then God says, well, then we'll extend the invitation to, to everybody. The only thing that leaves anyone out of the wedding feast is their own refusal to accept the invitation. And those who refuse all have possible excuses. You know, the one guy says, hey, I've just bought a piece of land, I have to go inspect it. Another guy says, I've just bought some uh, oxen, I, I need to go test them. And then another guy says, you know, I just got married. You know, I can't come, obviously, I, I, I'm busy. St. John Chrysostom, in his, uh, in his uh, um, this parable, when he writes, he says that some people are too busy, some are indifferent, some are too preoccupied with their own cares and concerns. The land and the oxen, he said, represent material possessions that hold people to the things of this earth. 
The people making these excuses are blind to the kingdom of God because they cannot and will not consider anything but beyond their own needs. The man who refused to come because he got married represents the passion of, early, of earthly possessions, earthly pleasures. Now, it's not that marriage is, is, is something wrong. I mean, obviously, marriage is a good thing. God ordained it. It's a sacrament, right? But in this case, St. John says, it had become an excuse to refuse the invitation to enter the kingdom of God. The bottom line, says St. John, is that each of these people do not respond to the invitation because they recognize no master but themselves. He says it's not that God is rejecting them, but that they have rejected the Lord. Now to bring that to our present day, no one is kept out of heaven because God rejects them, but only because they choose to go their own way rather than follow Christ. But the invitation to the marriage feast of the Lamb is extended to everyone. God says, I want my house, he wants his house to be full, speaking of the, the kingdom of heaven. And the good news is that no matter what we have done in the past, no matter what we were like in the past, it doesn't matter as long as we are now pursuing the kingdom of God and his righteousness and seeking to follow Jesus. When we get to heaven, all kinds of people are going to be there. Those who were rich in this life and those who were poor. There will be Republicans and Democrats. Yes, I hate to tell you, but that there will be both. There will be former murderers, prostitutes, and thieves. The thief on the cross will be there. We will be in heaven with those folks that you might not expect to see in heaven. But you know, there's an old saying, for every person that you're surprised to see in heaven, there will be 10 people who are surprised to see you there. <laughs> but the point is, everyone who is in heaven will have one thing in common. We will not be there because of our own righteousness, but only because we are clothed with the righteousness of Christ. That's why we sing at the baptism, as many as who have, have, are baptized in Christ have what? Have put on Christ. It's not because we deserve to go to heaven. It's not because any of us are worthy. It's only because of the righteousness of Christ that we will be at the, at the wedding feast of the Lamb. And we have, a force, we have a foretaste of the heavenly banquet here on earth in what we just experienced in, in receiving the Holy Eucharist. The Holy Eucharist is our foretaste on earth of the heavenly banquet. I'll just close with one, one story. Uh, when my, my grandson was, was little, I mean, he's, he's a teenager now, but um, he was probably around three years old, and I used to, I used to bring him to church. And uh, of course he was too uh, young, too little to, uh, to understand the significance of the Eucharist. But he got very excited at the end of the service when, uh, when we passed out the Andiro. He just thought that was so great, right? And so one Sunday we came home, uh, came home from church, and his mother said, "Well, what, you know, how was church today?" And he said, "Well, mom, he said, um, guess what? They gave us bread, and it was free." <laughs> <laughs> he was very excited about receiving that that free bread, you know, that he didn't have to pay for. It. But in his childlike exuberance, he really hit on an important lesson, and it's one that Saint Paul says. In, in the New Testament, that the gifts of God are freely given. The gifts of God are freely given. Because, brothers and sisters, you know, we are the poor. We're the maimed. We're the lame. We're the blind that have received the invitation. And it's freely offered to all of us. We cannot earn it. We don't deserve it. We're not worthy of it. But we do have to receive it. And that's the important point, that we need to respond to the invitation when God invites us to follow Him. And this is why we say in every liturgy that we commend ourselves and one another in all of our life unto Christ our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.